I'm a born Muslim. How many of you in the last 10 years you've been living in this country that you give one shahada a year? One shahada a year from your colleague, your co-workers, your neighbors. How many of you give one shahada a year? That's not no big deal. One shahada? Come on, man. If I ask you to throw your, your pole out into the water and the fish is jumping, you know what I mean? The fish is jumping up in the air. You don't even need no pole. You can just snatch them like that. But the Muslim, he ain't catching nothing. Why? He don't have the focus. He did not come here for that. But I guarantee you that if you ask any Muslim revert, that in 10 years, probably any revert will say, I give one shahada a year. Most of them will tell you, in 10 years, maybe I gave 50 or 60 or 100. In fact, I know I took a list of 150 reverts who among them, each one of them gave more than 5,000 shahadas. Can you imagine that? I made Hajj in 2006 with the uh, Hamla, Hamla to Raj, Rajai. You know those people, right? The Sheikh, you know, huh? Rajai did the fifth most wealthy family in Saudi Arabia. Hamlet al Rajai. Rajai. Yeah. I made, uh, mashallah, Hajj with them. They didn't give me no money, but I made Hajj with them. <laughs> you usually think if you travel with rich people, you should leave with something, right? <laughs> mashallah. So anyway, they, 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 mashallah, may Allah reward them. They're always very good. Uh, to me, inshallah, when I visited them. And so in Mina, I was in a tent about twice the size of this masjid with most of their sons, some of their uncles. And Sheikh Sulaim al Rajhi and his brother Abdullah was both there. I was si sitting next to his, his brother, Sulaiman, the wealthiest one, and Sheikh Ab Abdullah, the one who invited me and their sons and their all of them was there. Their imams of masjids, heads of jaliats, I mean, mashallah, hafiz of Quran, students of knowledge, and we're in Mina. And so in the last day of Mina, in the days of throwing the stones, huh, they asked me, uh, Sheikh, please advise us on the work of da'wah you're involved with, we want to know. So in the course of that talk, huh, I tell them, listen, one thing I just want to tell you that you should know. The baton of da'wah has passed beyond you. It's over. Yeah. They said, what is the baton? Arabic, Sheikh, what is that? You know, in the race, they, they pass the stick. What is that called in Arabic? I can, uh, I can stick, we call it asal. Yeah, yeah. I told them, you know, in the race, yeah. for the da'wah to captivate the minds and to clarify Islam, in the minds of the most progressive and powerful people in the world, the Arabs lost it long time ago. And if the Arabs lost it, definitely the Asians lost it. And if the Asians lost it, definitely the Africans lost it. No point intended uh, to the brothers, no ethnic uh, thing. It is a fact that the baton of da'wah now has passed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he given it to a new people. And I asked him, in case you want to doubt this issue, in case you think I'm talking a little bit arrogant, in, in case some of you feel a bit insulted that, that we invite this African-American, this Abdi, to make Hajj with us, and how he's talking to us. I said, maybe this is my last Hajj with you guys. <laughs> but this Hajj number 14. And if Allah let me, I'll make 50. But maybe the last Hajj with you guys but I want to let you know this. You are wealthy people and you are knowledgeable people. But the dower has passed from your hands. How I can prove that? I asked. There's probably 250 people sitting in this tent. And over on the other side, my wife was there with the women. The, and they got more money than the men. The Rajhi women got more money than the men. So I asked. And I told my wife, tell me what hands is raised over there. Because they had the speakers on. How many of you have given one shahada to an expatriate working for your company? 
each year, and only three of them could raise their hands. And among the women, none. This is the evidence. I said if I was talking with a group of reverts in Atlanta, Georgia, or in Greensboro, North Carolina, or in Chicago, Illinois, or in Brooklyn, New York, or any one of these urban places where reverts are there, and I asked 300 of them, how many of you gave shahada to at least one person since you have been a Muslim? Almost everyone would raise their hands. This is the proof. This is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is the sunnah of Allah that the Arabic will remain with the Arabs for until the day of judgment. There's no doubt about that. Let not any of us fool ourselves. Allah, he, he sent this religion in their tongue, and they are going to be the preservers of it until the day of judgment. Those who will learn it, will learn it from them. Right? right. This is what Allah gave them. Like the Quraysh, I mean, like, like the people of Mecca, mashallah, they're the ones who is the, uh, the, the, the ones who is uh, still giving to the, the water to the pilgrims, you know, Ilafi Quraysh, Ilafi Imrihat al Shita'i wa Sayyid. You know, this is, uh, this is something Allah gave to them. Uh, when I go to Mecca to visit my teacher, his masjid, Masjid Malik Fahad, is across the street from Bani, what's the ones who hold the key? Shaiba. Bani Shaiba. Across the street from Masjid Malik Fahad, Bani Shaiba is there. And the, the, the head of the clan, he's the one that the king, he has to go to him every year to get the key. There's a ceremony. The, key, the, 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 the king comes from Riyadh, and when he comes to Mecca, in his entourage, he drives by Bani Sheba house, and they get the key from the Bani Sheba, he get in the, in the car, they drive to the, to the harab, and they go inside, and Bani Sheba give the key to the king, and the king goes inside the Kaaba. This is a tradition. The, the man who from the head of the Bani Sheba, he doesn't even pray Fajr in that masjid across the street. And that masjid across the street is like uh, this, saf, this saf here, the saf in Masjid Malik Fahad, the saf, the first saf is like four times this, this year. Four times. If this year you see the saf, four times. And you see this here like these, these rows here, 45 rows. It's a big masjid, right? Yeah. So what do you think? The, the Bani Sheba, he have a masjid inside his own place? No. But I never see him, and even one day I ask him, he's cleaning his car. Why you don't pray in the masjid, Sheikh? He told us, not your business. Oh, he told me, mind your business. And he told my, my teacher, why are you talking to me like that? Tell him, mind his business. I tell him, mind, okay, you know, I'm from New York. I don't know. I just want to know you, that you're the holder of the key for the Kaaba, but I never see you for the Fajr prayer. So we need to first examine our condition. We need to first examine our condition. After that, we make treatment and reach a prognosis. And our problem, brothers, it is not just external. Don't think the enemies of Allah is external. There are more enemies for Muslims internal than there are external. We have to be honest about that. The challenges facing Muslims are more internal than they are external. And we must be honest about that. This means we need to correct ourselves first. Don't keep blaming others. Blaming somebody about Palestine, blaming somebody about Iraq, blaming somebody about Afghanistan, blaming somebody about Kashmir, blaming somebody about Somalia, blaming somebody about Egypt, about North Africa, West Africa, South Africa, this and that among the Muslims. No, visit the Muslims in those places and you will see that the internal disease of the Muslims is worse than the external ones. And me, I could not tell, say this, if I did not visit the Muslims, and I have, alhamdulillah, visited at least 31 of the so-called Muslim countries where the population is the majority. And I thank Allah for that. So we have to address the internal issues and the external issues and what global implications that they have. Now, what are these issues? I will not discuss them uh, much, but I will enter them in this manner. The issues include the role of women. Why do I put that first? 